Hi, I'm Chuck Ellinger, and we're going to be talking today on my council comment about three or four topics. We're going to be talking about Kentucky bicycle law. We're going to be talking about cycle September, week without driving, and the last one will be our transportation expo. First of all, I just want to talk about basic Kentucky bicycle law. It's important to know your legal rights when uh, bicycling in Kentucky. Bicycles are considered vehicles, and bicyclists shall operate a, a bicycle in the same manner as a motor vehicle. Uh, where to ride. Bicycles are required to ride upon the right side of the highway whenever possible. Bicycles may veer from the right of the road when traveling at the same speed of traffic, when necessary to continue their route, preparing for a turn, overtaking and passing, avoiding hazards, traveling a lane too narrow to share, avoiding a mandatory turn lane, and when on a one-way street. Bicycles are required to use the bike lanes unless the bicycle is traveling at the legal speed, preparing for a left turn, passing a slower vehicle, avoiding hazards, avoiding the door zone of a parking vehicle, avoiding a driveway or intersection where vehicles can turn right. One of the issues that people ask me all the time about is about sidewalks and, and where cyclists can ride on a sidewalk. Generally, they're permitted, um, but bicyclists must slow down to walking speed when pedestrians are present or expected and they should yield to pedestrians on sidewalks and cross um, walks. And they, one of the issues is when they're downtown in the business district and bicycles are allowed to ride on sidewalk outside of the business district. How to ride. Bicycles may not ride more than two abreast, but they are allowed to ride two abreast, except on paths or parts of roadways set aside for exclusive use of bicycles and may not impede the normal and reasonable movement of traffic. Bicycles are re required to slow down or come to a complete stop at stop signs and traffic devices and signaling when signaling red. As I said earlier, bicycles are considered vehicles and have to abide by the traffic laws. Bicycles on roadways must exercise due care when passing a standing vehicle or one proceeding in the same directions. Cars overtaking bicyclists, and this is important and this is something that passed the last couple years. Drivers must change lanes to pass bicyclists when there's more than one lane available. When only one lane is available, drivers must provi provide a minimum of three feet when passing bicyclists and when safe and may cross over the double yellow line to do so. Equipment. This is important for cyclists. At night, a, a bicycle must be equipped with a front light visible from 500 feet away and capable of revealing objects at least 50 feet in front of the bicycle. A rear re, a red reflector or a red light visible for at least 100 feet and one light or flashing red light visible from at least 500 feet are required on the bicycle or bicyclist at night. Every bicycle must have brakes which enable the cyclist to make braked wheels skid within 15 feet of at 10 miles an hour. And they must be, uh, they may be, but not required, may be equipped with a bell or horn. But when you do pass somebody, uh, either do a little beep beep or let them know I'm on your left. Things that you can't do. Bicyclists may not ride, may not ride other than a, 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 a on or stride a permanent or regular seat attached to you. You must have a seat. Bicyclists may not carry more than the number of persons which they're designed to. Bicyclists may not carry a package that requires that they have to take one hand, or they have to have one hand on the handlebar. You cannot, um, or you're not permitted to hold on to another motor vehicle, and they may, they may not be equipped with a siren or whistles. And alcohol is uh, just like on, in a vehicle, Kentucky DUI statute uh, um, uh, does apply to bicyclists. So those are kind of the general rules. Let's walk around and just talk to some cyclists and, and get a feel for what, as cyclists, what they go through and what, what we need to know about them. Well, we're fortunate today to have 10-time national champion, Ben Halecki. Ben has uh, been a, a staple in this community riding for tens of thousands of miles. In fact, she has the most amount of miles ridden in the club, over 60,000 miles, and that doesn't include miles that she's done on her. How many miles do you think you've ridden in your life? Ben? Don't know, probably half a million, but half I've never added miles. them up, probably. So with that, you've experienced a lot on the road. Could you kind of just talk about things that we should be aware of so we can share the road? Yeah, it's becoming much more um, scary to ride. At this point in time, um, I know you're all aware that we had a recent death on Ironworks Pike, a 39-year-old man was hit from the back 
Um, a couple days later in the state of New Jersey, uh, an NHL star and his brother were hit from the rear and they were also killed. Um, so we're starting to see more and more serious accidents. When I first started riding 30 years ago, it was more of watching the other cyclists and making certain that they didn't hit you. Sometimes Chuck rode a little scary and you had to be very careful with Chuck. But seriously. She's like my sister. So yeah, we, we are. We tease each other. But um, right now, distracted driving is becoming a major issue. And many people, I was just with a couple yesterday, last night, and they both told me they're not going to ride on the road. They are going to only ride on trails um, because they're too afraid. And their children tell, tell them, please don't go, because they also had a death in an extended, fam an extended family member. So distracted driving is becoming a major issue that we need to worry about. I'm the rides coordinator for the club. We've done over 275,000 miles this year. Um, we love the central Kentucky. We love the bluegrass state. Um, but the challenge is we have to be able to share the roads with cars. And so um, I'm begging the drivers. I'm begging as you sit down behind the wheel, an extra 10 or 15 seconds is not going to be a problem. And that's all we're talking about. And we'll, we, we will get over. The challenge with some of our local roads is we love riding on them. There's no shoulder and there's diff it's difficult to get over for us because if we get in the grass or on the, on the dirt, sometimes we can go over. So we, we look for a safe place to pull over. So I implore everyone that uh, we're all drivers, we're all citizens, we're all neighbors, and a lot of us are all friends. Please take an extra 30 seconds or 10 seconds and care about your neighbor and care about your family because in, in reality, we're all a family. All right, so we're back now. Uh, today, um, we do, we're doing a ride out, Davis Fork. This ride's been going on with Tom Walters for 23 years. Tom has been leading this ride. And let me just talk about the Bluegrass Cycling Club. I've got my Bluegrass Cycling Club uh, jersey on. And what I always try to tell people is make sure you're visible. You can, see, you can see some of the jerseys we have are very visible. So when we're out riding, people will be able to see us. But Tom and the club, we've been, we've been doing this club for many, many years. And Tom's been doing this ride out here. Tom, why don't you just talk about uh, things that you go over about the ride. This ride has grown from, at that time, probably five or six people and the only ride during the day, the morning hours that the club had. And now there's actually more rides in the mornings through the week than there is on the weekends. But like I say, we've been out here for 23 years. We've got a great crowd. But we always try to go through the basics of, the, um, of what we want to right. expect from the, uh, the people that are going to be riding. The biggest and most important thing is just communication, that we, we talk while we're on the ride. So if there's any safety um, hazards we need to know about, that we can address that. And Tom, you can kind of go briefly over what we ask our ride leaders to do before every ride. All right, we want to make sure everybody wears a helmet. That's a must. We've, we've, we've seen that, that the helmet is very important. There's no cell phones while moving, no earbuds. We want to make sure we hear the traffic come up behind us. Uh, call out hazards. We do car up, car back. We point out gravel on the road, which is pretty dangerous to riders. Wet in the tree line, you'll, it'll be wet. You want to call that out. Just want to make it safe. Move off the road when stopping. If you have an emergency, you want to move off to the side of the road. Obey all traffic laws, stop at signs, use hand signals. Uh, keep space between yourself and others. You don't want to run up on the rider in front of you. That's very dangerous. Tell others when passing, pass on the left. Ride single fire or two abreast. Remind riders that they should have water bottle, air supply, and tube. So we want to be as safe as possible as we can out here. And we'd encourage more people to come out and ride and uh, we, we will mentor you and get you going. I know a lot of people are concerned with riding on the road, but in general, it's, it's not bad. If you just obey the laws and be very visible, we suggest lights on your bike and have them very bright. 
I think that's important. And safety is key. We want to make sure everybody's safe. And with the club, we have all levels. We'll have, we'll, you can be in e either from a novice to what we call an EF rider. So we have all levels. So if you, if you feel a little apprehensive to come out, we will, we will mentor you that you'll, you'll feel good by the time. We also do rides on, if you don't want to be on the road, we also do rides on the trails. And we do a, ride, a few rides on the Legacy Trail to get people starting to feel comfortable. I've got a couple other ride leaders over here. Devanya, would you like to talk about some of the things that you see when you're on, that people should be aware of when they're riding on the road and things that, that would help um, people feel safer on the road? Well, I think uh, main key, um, Tom covered basically everything that we um, talk about, but the most important thing when you're in a group ride is communication. And uh, we always um, call out our turns so if you're on the front of the pace line and, I, and me as a ride leader and I'm in the back and I call out and I call out a right hand turn, I want those people on the front to show me that they heard the turn. So that way everybody knows where they're going and you're not crossing paths. And one of the things we want to make sure is that we're, we're good um, stewards and that we share the road and we always want to make sure that we we kind of ride in the same as with a car line so if we're doing d a double pace line that we don't want to be left of the yellow line because we, the law allows three feet but if we don't if we're not doing our job and staying close to the right side in the middle of the road then cars can't pass us so those are just some of the basics I think but we would love to have you come out here and and ride with us with the Bluegrass Cycling Club and, and would love to see everybody out there and being safe. But as I said earlier, uh, bicyclists are considered vehicles, so we all have to share the road, but we also have to abide by all the, the rules. All right, so uh, one of the events that we have coming up here uh, is called Cycle September. Cyclists of all ages and skill levels are invited to participate in Cycle September. The theme month is part of an international movement to reduce carbon emissions and traffic congestion while improving public health. More trips by bicycle results in more efficient transportation network and safer streets. The MPO, which is the Lexington Area Metropolitan Planning Organization, is the local sponsor for the effort. Sign up for Love to Ride, an online cycling platform that encourages people to ride bikes, log rides, set goals, earn badges, connect with other riders and more. During Cycling September, you can win prizes from local businesses and compete with your coworkers through the Workplace Challenge. Some of the events that they have coming up here is they're going to have a Broke Spoke LGBT night. They're going to have uh, Pedal Power is going to have a bike clinic. Uh, Broke Spoke is doing a, a Women in Fem night. And um, on September 28th, Sea Leaf Garden Walk and Bike Tour. So some, those are some of the events that are coming up. But just go, you can go on the website, lexingkentucky.gov backslash bike walk. The next event that's coming up here is going to be week without driving and that's going to be September 30th through October 6th and the history behind that is in 2021 Disability Rights Washington launched week and it's um, hashtag week without driving to challenge our leaders to better understand the barriers non-driver experience in accessing our communities after two successful years in Washington State in 2023 the challenge went national in partnership with America Walks and the goal. The goal of this is the Week Without Driving Challenge aims to draw attention to the difficulties faced by non-drivers in accessing our communities across the country and to inspire decision makers to address the barriers and gaps in our transportation system. How you can participate. You can get around however you want, but the challenge does not drive yourself. This isn't disability simulation or a test of how easily you can find alternatives. Having to drive during the challenge does not signify failure. The point is to consider how someone without the option to drive have coped and what choices they may have made. And the last one is our Transportation Expo. Our Transportation Expo is, is being put on by the council and it's going to be on October 19th from 9 to 11.30 and it's going to be at the Marksbury Library off of Sales Road. And what we're going to do is, is the council wants to get interaction about transportation policy. We're going to have a lot of different uh, groups coming in there. And we just want to get a, a feel for how we can improve our transportation in here in Lexington. So we welcome everybody to come out and participate. I'm looking forward to that. That's on October 19th from 9 to 1130 at the Marksbury Library. The more the better. And we look forward to seeing you on that. Thank you for listening. This has been Chuck Ellinger on Council Commons.